Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today, we'll have a look at this study from Tokyo University in Japan, which looks at NMN supplementation in older men. As it says in the title, they saw elevated NAD levels in the blood and improved muscle function. A quick overview of the paper before we look at the details. As it says, there is limited data on the impact of NAD precursors in humans. The trial was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, parallel group of 42 Japanese men, aged 65 and above. The intervention was to take 250 milligrams of NMN orally, daily, for a period of 12 weeks, with tests at baseline 6 weeks and 12 weeks. I can find no information on whether instructions covering the time of day that the NMN should be taken were included. The NMN was well tolerated. They saw that NAD and some of its metabolites were increased in the blood. There was significant improvement in gait speed and left hand grip strength. There was no change in body composition. And the conclusion was that NMN is efficiently boosting NAD, at least in the blood, and having some impact on aging-related muscle dysfunction. One of the comments that the authors made was that the NMN was well tolerated. To check this, they looked at blood samples and ran a battery of standard tests on the blood, kidney and liver markers and saw no negative impact. They did see a significant increase in NAD levels in the blood, even with 250 milligrams, which is not a large dose for humans. The levels of NAD in the treatment group went from 0.17 micromoles to 1.07, a difference of 0.89, a five times increase. Tissue NAD levels would always be better, but they are hard to get in human trials. Interestingly, they also saw an increase in a number of the metabolites of NAD, such as nicotinamide riboside, nicotinic acid, and nicotinamide. Let's look at where these metabolites fit into the NAD cycle. The participants supplemented with NMN, which is in the salvage pathway, although it can also come from NR. So it would seem reasonable that nicotinamide might also increase. NMN is also converted by the liver into nicotinamide. But they also saw increases in NR, nicotinic acid, and nicotinic acid mononucleotide the last two of which are part of the de novo pathway. In the paper, they suggest a few mechanisms for these molecules, including that they come from metabolism of NMN by microbes in the gut. Turning to the results that they saw in the physical test. First, the gait speed. In this test, the participants walked for 16 meters, with only the middle 10 meters being measured. We can see that the placebo went down while the treatment arm increased from 1.45 to 1.60. Note that the unit of measure is meters per second, so higher is better. And this was significant as the p-value is less than 0.05. Next is grip strength. On the right-hand side, there is very little difference in either group. Although the treatment group is slightly better, it is marginal and not significant. For the left hand, although the treatment group was stronger than the placebo at baseline, they improved further. And the difference was significant. The authors speculated that the difference in right and left was because 90% of Japanese are right-handed, and the right hand would therefore have more exercise, and a larger group would be required to see the impact. For the chair stand test, which counts how many times a participant can stand up from a chair and sit back down in 30 seconds, the NMN group saw a slight improvement, but it was not significant. Briefly looking at areas where no change was seen, we have body composition. And the conclusion was that there was no significant change in skeletal muscle mass. There was a similar story for visceral fat, which was not impacted by NMN, nor did it help with insulin resistance as measured by HOMA IR, nor did it impact any of the common markers such as lipid panel and HbA1c. And finally, looking at some other age-related phenotypes in sensory, vascular, and cognitive areas. There was marginal improvement in the right ear but no impact on vascular or cognitive function based on the tests that they ran. The trial was originally designed for 64 participants, but 22 had to be dropped because of an administrative error, which may have impacted the significance of the results. And of course, it only included healthy men. 
though they do speculate that existing evidence would point to the results being more widely applicable. So further evidence that NMN supplementation does indeed increase blood NAD levels and great to see that even at a low dose of 250 milligrams for 12 weeks, there was significant change in some physiological markers such as gait speed and grip strength. It would be nice to see a higher dose. I also like the thorough screening for the other markers in terms of safety 